good news, uh, but it doesn't say that I'm the co-host yet. So I'm halfway there. Uh, okay, well, good morning, everyone. Uh, Karen at the hospital having surgery with uh, Michael today. Uh, so we're gonna send you our love. Any, any, anything particular you need? Sorry, what? Anything you need? Any any words of advice from all of us while you're sitting there? <clears throat> well, hang in there, you know, everything turns out okay. Right. Right. That's <clears throat> that's that's good advice. I uh, we I was really asking if you would like any of our advice. <laughs> I do. I oh. or any of our kind words. Is there anything we can give to you, Karen? Right. Um there you know the okay well let's hope let's hope that works it did work very well okay. okay so Ooh, we she, got donna's face now too oh good if, yeah <laughs> karen pops out we'll know why uh, okay well uh janet mills is in amsterdam today wow so, amazing uh, yeah Lewis. so we really have to kind of give her the double thumbs up so she's going to watch you all in recording so if you want to say something to janet mills now's your chance janet. <laughs> right? we're so happy you're having fun in amsterdam <laughs> well you know that was her big goal right i mean this is her achieving it i can't think of a better way to start off pay yourself first than janet buying two tickets from Amsterdam and having to watch this in the replay. Yay. Wow. So, so I'm just going to give everybody a chance to say hi to Janet uh, in the replay. Um, Sandy, what, any words for Janet? Well, I was just thinking about you, Janet, this morning and how you're always so um, complimentary of my emails and you always have something nice to say and you're my cheerleader and I always think positively about you. And I was just thinking about you this morning. So I hope you're having a great time in Amsterdam. Oh, it's wonderful. Kathy Corgard, anything you wanna to say to Janet? Um, more of the same, like you are always so positive and happy and you're a wonderful cheerleader to all of us. And we love you so much and are so happy that um, you're achieving this big life goal. Like that's amazing. And I hope you come home because we love you. <laughs> <laughs> And, and that and that brings it to Donna. Donna, any words for Janet living on her dream here? Just thanks for being an inspiration. My gosh, that's uh, that's living the dream. Very impressive. And it's also nice to have your positivity being shared across the globe because yeah, you are something special with that positivity. Yeah, I I agree. I agree. I agree. Uh, okay. Uh, Karen Carson, any words for Janet, or are you able to even chime in at all? Yeah, well, yes, I'm, I think I'm unmuted. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. <laughs> okay, good. Oh, Janet, 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 I just, I'm so happy for you that you're getting to do this for one thing. And my gosh, I'm thinking about you in the, la in the land of tulips. I saw some photos just the other day of huge fields of tulips. And I know you'll be taking pictures of lots of other things, but I'm, I'm having this image in my mind of you in a whole field of tulips. Can't oh. wait for you to come back. <laughs> okay, great, great, great. Okay, well, I'm gonna go back around um, and I'm gonna mute Karen again, because uh, it's so loud there. Um, but Kathy Corgard, give us your check-in. Thank you so much. Um... Yeah, well, I mean, there's a lot going on last time. So let me go back to, we just saw you a month ago and you were like, I don't, you were just getting through the slime of winter. Yes, and feeling defeated because I work, I feel like I work a lot, but I'm not getting paid a lot. And so we talked about, you know, the idea of, of maybe raising uh, my rates and I've given a lot out and I think that I'm, I'm going to do it. Dan and I are kind of starting maybe a, a new adventure. And so uh, we had talked that maybe I would wait just a little bit to do that so that um, if I lost any clients that it maybe wouldn't impact our new business. 
Um, so just trying to look at the big picture. I think it's still been really slow, like oddly slow. Um, but this month, I feel like I didn't, I didn't put in more than I took out. You know what I mean? Like I didn't, I, I didn't make a lot of money, but I also, I took some days. I, I, there was that one week that it was so nice out and I played hooky almost the whole week. Like I would work a few hours and I'd be like, yeah, go outside. And then I feel less angry. Um, but I'm still feeling a little bit defeated. Like it's scary to go into year four and, and for the first time, not see growth. Right. Um, and, and so I decided I'm going to work on networking some more and, and make sure that I'm, I'm getting out there. I kind of have let that go when things get busy. That's the, you know, besides exercising, that's the first thing I let go of. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I, I will, I will send you an invite for a cool person lunch. How about that? Oh, I love cool people lunch. I, I love cool people lunch. I will, I will send you an invite to cool person lunch. Um, so that'll be a place to network. Um, do you have a question for the group specifically? Or do you want them to respond to? I guess I'm, I'm curious because like, there is a lot of other business owners in here that when, when you, is, is, is this a normal part of the process? Is it just a weird lull? Is it, you know, the economy? Like there's so many things that you don't know which which part of the journey is it? Is it like, this is just the lull of the economy. This is just the lull of year four. I feel like I'm supposed to be on this trajectory and I'm kind of on this trajectory. And I don't think it's it's dire yet, but I've, you know, I've given thought to the idea of picking up a weekend job and, you know, going to look at like, go work at some great med spa clinic where I can get all my Botox for free or, you know, something right. where, where there's fun benefits. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I'm gonna let Sandy respond to that. So, um, yeah, so your business is, is, you know, related to my business and it's very slow. Mm -hmm. I mean, unfortunately, all the agents are complaining about how slow it is. Yeah. And we're all, I mean, I, I work, I have a great work environment and I can see the agents at my company are working so hard and they are having success, but it's just not as busy as it should be, especially for this time of year. So we, you know, we just keep plugging along so I think it has to do with the real estate economy I mean the real estate you know mm -hmm. being slower and for all those reasons because yours is related so it's like you just have to wait it out and figure out how to get through this time so I think a lot about that like I'm spending I feel like I'm spending a lot of money because like I I told you I'm doing some more promotions this year mm -hmm. with Fulton and stuff yeah yeah Fulton and the wedding fair um, and I realize, oh, I've got to buy some advertising specialties and, oh my gosh, look at how expensive they are. And how many do mm -hmm. I have to, and so I'm spending a lot of time, like, what are the, what is it going to look like? And I'm, I feel like I'm wasting time online shopping for advertising specialties. Like, I feel like this is not what I should be doing, but right, right, right. whatever. And so, and then I think about the money and like, <gasps> yeah. but we, we keep moving on. And then I look at my numbers, you know, like what do I have in the bank? It's like, okay, I guess I'm Okay. You know, I've got, I've got closings coming up. I do have more clients coming up. So I say, you just have to keep working along. Hey, and if you can get your free Botox, that's a good idea because I canceled my Botox appointment and I'm not rescheduling my hydrofacial appointment because it's like, well, I got to cut something out. <laughs> right, right, right. And, and, and that's, oh, wow, Donna, you're the, look at yourself in the camera. It looks like you have this great Medusa hair. Um, oh yes, yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. Because <laughs> of all the plants. That's yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Thank you, Sandy. Fantastic. It's nice to hear that that I mean, not that I would ever want anyone to to be slow, but it's nice to hear that that it's not necessarily a product of what I'm doing or not doing. That it's maybe a product of the environment right now, and that this is probably just part of the storm that we'll have to weather, and that this is business that ebbs and flows. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. I think so. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Don, do you have any response at all or? Well, it just reminded me of the somebody on social media saying, you know, if your trajectory is, you know, from point A to point B, very smooth and straight, um, it's probably not your path. <laughs> you're probably, you're, it's probably not your path because <laughs> if, you know, the whole it's all about that journey and process as Mickey would say. And, you know, like, and when I heard that there was this sense of like, Oh, okay. I am on the right path then because yeah, it's pretty curvy. 
pretty up and down. It is, and and that's a really valid thing to remember is that there's nothing on, on my journey, I don't know about anybody else's, that's ever been um, straight line. It's always been a... Yeah, and I, I, I'm a big fan of the book, Choosing Easy World. Um, choosing easy world choosing easy world it's it's not the most um i love the message in it the writing is you know whatever but the the message is wonderful that we you know if it's anything worth working yeah worth attaining is you got to work hard for and it's like you know you could i i don't want to go there but i mean it is to say that i'm not i'm not saying that that I'm not saying it has to be difficult in order to be your path, but the windiness, the curviness, the up and down of it, that direction of um, that part is, it's just going through the motions, I guess. The contrast, right? That like, it's hard to yeah. know that how gorgeous 60 feels like if it wasn't 40 yesterday. <laughs> 60 yeah, feels really amazing next to yesterday. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I I can see that that the, the contrast is is important, and that without that contrast, we're not able to ask for new things. Like, hey, um, I I appreciate this lull, but I would like the lull to be maybe a little less lully and a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, are you ready for the Mickey response? Always. Did your ass don't work? No. <laughs> Uh, no, you know what? I think that again, right? When you start to think about what I don't like about stinking thinking, is um, is it stinks, right? <laughs> it stinks, and it takes us away from the place that we really are there to be, right? I mean, our goal every day, we all have the same goal, right? It's to be well within, right? That we can, you know, kind of make that target you know, pull our arrow back and get to that target. How am I well with it? And the, the difficult part of that is that you're gonna do it in all of these ridiculous and perplexing situations, right? You're gonna do it while you're building a business. You're gonna do it while you're looking at another business. You're gonna do it while you're parenting. You're gonna do it while there's all this stuff on, right? That, that we have to be able as a marksman for our own lives is to be able to take that shot in a lot of different ways. Right? How do we take it without any wind? How do we take it without any resources? You have to, that's, that is the opportunity that self-employment gives you, is it makes you a great marksman, right? That you will be able to take that shot of how to be well within without any other thing, right? The greatest resource is resourcefulness. So the fastest way to turn stinking thinking around because every time you're it's not the right number you go Ooh, right Ooh. and we all kind of cringy cringe cringe and then we get that that like blast that starts in your heart and goes right down to your stomach right that just goes Wah! right and and that isn't a happy place to be and so i remind people i'm blessed to be a blessing i am blessed to be a blessing i am blessed to be a blessing and, and I know that sounds, um, I, I'm not trying to take that from a devotional point. It is really from an emotional point is to really remind yourselves, what is the blessing that you get to be today, right? I am well within. I don't have anything on the books. I am well within. What do I need today to be well within? Do I need to make 10 calls? Do I need to do these other things? Sometimes it's reaching out to people on LinkedIn. Sometimes it's doing this other thing. I don't always have to leave my house to be able to meet with people. But if I come to them with a blessing, right? Many people count on a phone call from me because I'm usually calling with money. I'm usually calling with opportunity. Hey, I found this table for you that you can have a booth at, or I found this. A lot of times I'm calling to be a blessing. But I'm also changing the energy of my own life. So when you think about that blessing, it is to say, who should you be calling? Right? If you have, think about it. How many times you were just so swamped, you couldn't even call a friend? Mm -hmm. Great. If you've got an hour of time, then let's invest in that. Let's use that. You, you can take that energy and now go, 
how can I make, look, you have so many great friends. Um, you, you absolutely, right? Absolutely. You could come in and bless somebody else. Right. So we, we love to see that piece, right. Of just be, you know, blessed to be a blessing. And so when you're thinking about, I'm not growing, I'm not growing, I'm not growing. The year's not finished yet. One good order, one good remodel can double last year's salary. And one of the things about that obstacle, and we'll talk about obstacles today, is that we forget that. We forget that, you know, uh, we were talking about something that this just this morning in my own household of like, oh, I need five grand, like quick. <laughs> right? But it could have been something that derailed me, or it could be something that challenged me. And you get to choose that. You get to choose that because you know how to make five grand, right? I know how to make five grand. Um, lots of people don't. So when you start to think about a prosperity concept of how do you take when you're feeling small, right? When you're feeling puny, when you're feeling like I'm not sure, is you go back into that prosperity mindset. And that prosperity mindset, again, is the ability to magnify, right? What can I make bigger? Well, I can make bigger the things that are making me freaked out, or I can make bigger the, the, the magic, robust, delicious world that I love to be in. And when I think about delicious for you, sometimes it's just going to a beautiful market and, and hanging out with your friends. Um, sometimes beautiful is spending time in, um, in, in a nursery and, and I mean like flower nursery this time of yeah. year, right? That being in the garden, getting to the lake, doing these other things, you can do them with other people. If you think that your friends are slow, then call them and ask them, Hey, are you slow? If you're slow, we should have lunch. We should go it. talk about it, right? Blessing. You are blessed to be a blessing. Bring that beautiful brain of yours to someone else's table. Right, and it doesn't always have to be a work thing. I can, I can bless people's lives in other ways and putting that, that good energy out into the world always comes back. Yeah, yeah. There'll be a slide in today's thing of you have to, um, an opportunity. I'll, I'll, be, I'll, I'll, I'll be very interested in today what you pick out as your thing. Okay. I'll be very interested. But there's one of, there's a slide in here in my top 10 tips that I think you'll really like, that you'll really you. like. Okay, uh, Kaylin, how are you? I'm you doing are, good, sorry, I can't have my video on today. <laughs> it's okay, go ahead and introduce yourself to the group. Welcome to class. Hi, I'm Kaylin Wolf and I am a newer photographer. Good. Well, we are glad to see you here. Um, anything you want to tell the group about yourself or where you're working or what you like, or do you have a question for the group? Um, I guess I am just focused on right now, just getting, getting more clients and just, you know, trying to figure out what, what I'm more passionate about, I guess. Good, good. Do you, can I let the group respond? Yeah. With questions? Okay, Donna, I'm gonna start with you. Um, any questions for Kaylin? Am I saying it right, Kaylin? What, what's your location? I'm in uh, Monticello in Minnesota. Oh, okay. Well, what yes. type of photography do you do? What was that? What type of photography do you do? Um, mostly do portrait photography right now, just a variety of mostly like families and couples. Okay. Um, uh, so please put your info, everybody in the chat so that Kaylin can uh, have this in her stuff. Um, and then Kaylin, were you, did you happen to be someone who gave models ride yesterday? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you for doing that. Yeah, absolutely. They, they, they are precious to me. So thank you very much. <laughs> of course. Good. Um, is for those of you who know my life, uh, 
Kaylin is a photographer that actually photographed Karsten and Tegan yesterday for Janine Marie's class. Mm -hmm. So, so will will you next time she comes, she might be able to share a picture of this amazing dress that actually would have looked fabulous on both Donna McCurdy's shape and Kathy Corgard. You both Donna would have liked it because it's so. I don't know, Kaylin. You want, how would you describe that dress? Uh, it's uh, kind of more like Renaissance style. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was very long and it flowed and, you know, yeah. Yeah. Nice. I am frequently trying to get Kathy Corgard in a dress to photograph her. <laughs> 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 that, that there was one day that I, that I actually made Kath, Kathy come into my office and go, can you just, can you just try this dress on? Mm -hmm. True story. True story. Right. Right. Oh, I, I don't know anyone else that you would, would invite you to be naked in their office, but. That's also <laughs> a true story. Or in the middle of their work day, we'd be like, can you stop the work that we pay you for and come into the office and try out something completely unrelated? Just cause. Yeah. Just cause, yeah. It's true. It's true. So yeah, I'm a sucker for a great dress. And so, so is Donna. Yes. Yes. So. Okay, well, welcome, Kaylin. We're so glad that you are here. Um, in the chat box is your magic tool. So please uh, type in what you have. Um, Kathy, you had already gone before Kaylin got here. Do you want to just tell her what you do for a living? Oh, hi, Kaylin. I am Kathy Corgard. I am a selection designer. So I help uh, homeowners and contractors pick out all the pieces that don't move during a remodel or refresh. So think cabinets, flooring, plumbing, lighting, all the things that don't move, like paint. Um, yeah, that's me. That's you. Cool. Good, good. Sandy Cleland, give us your update and tell us what you do. Um, <clears throat> I'm a real estate agent. I live in Southwest Minneapolis near Edina and Richfield. So I've been helping people buy houses, uh, townhouses and condos, um, since 1990. And I'm with Remax Results. And, um, so... <clears throat> Thinking about what Mickey said about um, I'm blessed to be a blessing. So, and also with Kathy talking about it being slow. So it's like, oh, I'm supposed to call my past clients. Oh, I should be calling 10 people a day. And I thought, oh, I don't want to do this. Well, I thought, well, what if I just called the people that really need a phone call? You know, like somebody that's, you know, because we know all about what every, you know, what half of our friends are up to because we see everything on Facebook and all their pets that died or they fell down and broke something. And so anyway, my, my massage therapist, um, recently broke her wrist and had to have an operation. Well, clearly she's not working and she's single self-employed. That's so anyways, I called her and she also does astrological charts, which she's done my chart a few times. So we just chatted and she told me about what's going on with her. And um, I'm like, are you still doing your charts? Oh, sure. I said, well, why don't I make an appointment? So anyways, we made an appointment. And then she's like, you know, I could use, you know, I'd love to do more charts for people. I mean, you know, I mean, she's gone through two months of savings. She's getting some assistance from the county. I mean, she's, she's getting some help. But so anyway, I put a big Facebook post out there and I got eight responses. Oh, eight yes. responses. And two of the women that responded have already called her to set up appointments. Yay. So, and that's the only call that I made <laughs> was just her, but it really impacted her financially, mm -hmm. emotionally, everything. And of course it makes me feel good. It makes all the people reading the post feel good that they could also help. Mm -hmm. And um, so that was kind of a big deal. So, and that's, and then that is blessed to be a blessing. Right? Exactly. Yes. I could help her because of my, my network and the way I wrote the email, you know, I had a lot of different components that people could latch on to. Like I believe in supporting women, self-employed, small businesses, um, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, there was a lot of stuff they go, Oh yeah, I could do this. And a lot of people were like, Oh gee, I, I've never, I like to have my chart done, but I never really knew who to call. Or, yeah. I didn't know there were people in town that did this. So it was kind of fun. Um, let's see. So in order to, so something about um, 
you know, keeping our spirits up when we're not busy. So um, my office, agents in my office have started getting together on Tuesday mornings. We have a Zoom call and whoever wants to join joins and they share what's going on in the market. They share their marketing tips and just anything that we want to talk about, but it's very positive and uplifting and you get to see, you know, how positive everybody is and what great resources we have in our company. And then once a w- once a month, we're meeting in person to do the same thing. So I think that's been really, really helpful for the agents to be able to get together regularly and share with other positive people and just keep go, go, go and go. And some of them are so good with with uh, social media. So on the one hand, it makes you feel like, oh, God, you know, I'm so <laughs> I'm so bad at it, but at the same time, it's like, oh my God, look what so-and-so's doing, you know, and then you feel good about them and what they're doing. And like, we have a lot of new, newer agents that came from other companies, but they've only been in the business maybe a couple of years and they're just doing great, you know, so it's fun. So that's all I have. I'm just working and getting ready for those events. Uh, and, And so I've been struggling with what to offer at these events and what games. And so then I was reading my notes from last month and you guys gave me so many good ideas. So duh. Anyway, (laughs) so that's my whole, I got everything right there in my April note. So do you you need stuff for your giveaway basket? (laughs) Yeah, but I haven't decided what it's going to be yet. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, you can yeah. also invite your friends to host a basket too, to go, oh, hey, is there one from, you know, everything is beautiful is hosting a basket or- I would absolutely you know, host a basket for you all day, every day. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So if you need a basket hosted, I'm happy to host. Oh, okay. Mike Fantastic. was consulting and I was always find something magic. Thank mm-hmm. you. So, so mm-hmm. if you wanted to go in on a bigger basket or something like that, you can put- you know, use your, use your contacts. Okay. And you have some great contacts. And when I think about um, that basket, I think about your, um, uh, you know, all of the people that you employ for showing the house, for designing the house, for doing all that work. I'm sure they all would have some opportunity for you. Okay. Great ideas. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay. Donna McCurdy. Okay. It's your season. It's yeah. this is the magic. Oh my gosh. I am one day away from having coffee on the porch for breakfast, you know. Um so like uh, I'll just uh what's going well is um well like Sandy saying I looked at my notes from last meeting. It's like I'm always amazed at how much stuff just comes around. Blessed to be a blessing. I'm like but I don't know, it's sitting different today hearing it. It's like, oh, wait a minute. Um, That's my forte, you know, is to be a blessing. That's, I've heard that from employers all along. It's like, you're such a, you know, blessing. They don't say that word, but that's what they mean. Um, So in the no zero days category, I've had a little bit of a revelation and that is, you know, those fancy planners that you buy that don't tend to sometimes you don't use them right Uh, well I bought a fancy planner uh, for 2023 and finally in the month of April I'm like this is not a planner this is a tracker yes and for me that's just been a big light bulb thing Um, And so I'm tracking my no zero days. And I mean, like, this is finally happening. And it's not just zero. I'm, 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 I'm taking it across the board. It doesn't have to be in my business. But of course, yay, if it is, but I just, I'm using different, if I contact a friend or go for a walk with a friend, that's a heart. And then if it's business, I do a star you know, I use little visuals and then hopefully across the board, I can see all this full and, and certainly, wow, it's a good feeling at the end of the day to be like, yep, I filled in that space. It's not blank. And, you know, so to be recognizing those, um, 
you know, small steps um, is great. I, um, I've gotten hung up on my fair, uh, F-A-I-R dot, F-A-I-R-E dot com, the wholesale emporium. I've gotten hung up in my application. So I still am not up and running with that. So that's my like, hmm, that still needs to happen. But I, I mean, I've started, I just get hung up. But anyway, um, I do want to keep checking in about that because I feel like that is my place. That is where I need to be. Um, and then just, I am, oh, 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 the other wonderful thing is, you know, I have a day job. I call him my benefactor and I have, it's been a good schedule, but I have tweaked, you know, I teach water aerobics also. I have tweaked these worlds into an ideal schedule. Oh. So I mean, like, it's beautiful. And, and the, it just fell into place. It was a big to do because I have two different, uh, three different employers and blah, blah, blah. And so anyway, um, I will never have a conflict with this course. I will have basically every morning off except the one I teach water aerobics Thursdays. So it is to say today, I, this is my last week of my old schedule. I am going to be in motion between like 9.45 and 10.30. And so I might, hopefully I'll be in my space to come back in at the end. But it is to say that um, I'm going to be turning, I'm going to be going dark, and uh, but I will be listening. Okay. Sounds wonderful. Sounds wonderful. Okay, well, uh, there's going to be two slides in today that Donna, I'm going to be, I'm going to prep that I think are going to be pro problem, probably really helpful to you. But Great. one is, I've talked about this this app called Stellar. Um, I think it's four dollars for a lifetime. It's actually a tool to um, do star charts for children. Um, but it is the best tool I found for the least amount of money to do that tracking method of just, you, you can make up to 30 lists of things and you just go in the day and give yourself a gold star for the things that are done. And then nice. um, what it works on is it also works on what's the reward. So you can go, well, do I need to do it 10 times, 30 times or 50 times? Yeah, yeah. And um, so I will pick things that are really, I, I will share my lists with people when I talk about it. But that stellar chart is, a, is exactly what you're talking about, which is tracking. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what it actually does oh, is it actually will turn down the anxiety around, are you doing it? Right? Are you doing it right? Because when you were starting to write down a star for this or a heart for this, that you went, oh, I'm actually progressing. Mm -hmm. And that's what allows us to go forward even more. Right. So if you see you're progressing, it's really easy to keep going, right? That's, yeah. why, that's why every diet program wants you to quick lose five pounds on the first week. Uh, so you feel like you're really doing it, like you'll stay with it. Um, so it's, it's really looking at what are the methods that can help you do that. And tracking is a big deal. Um, but there's another, there's another slide in here about promises. I think you'll like that too. So, um, it's, it's nice to be able to keep your promises to yourself. And, you know, I have so that. many different, I love this idea of having the different, um, lists and like 30 that's about right yep because I just have all these different categories in my life that are all this is very important to me <laughs> yes. Yes. and how do you keep track yeah and how do you know and so I I do um I've done a couple of different methods of how do you track you know all of those things like I want to read 50 books this year or I want to uh you know have 50 this or whatever right I mean you just kind of go Oh, okay. How am I going to get that all done? Or how far did I go? Or I want to learn 50. I, I wanted to, you know, have 50 new music songs in my life. You know, sometimes it's just like, okay, well, what, what can I get towards my goals? Sometimes they're not huge goals that are going to change my business profile, but they sure will change my happiness profile. Right. Well, I've been stuck so long that 
I mean, any progress is like uh, one large leap for mankind. I mean, like I'm like big, even the smallest stuff is a big deal. And I, I've definitely given myself the contrast, the perspective to be like, oh yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah. Anything. Anything. It's awesome. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. Okay. Well, I am going to start to share my screen, everyone. Um, any last words of advice for anybody today? Donna, what is the hiccup with the, I'm sorry, I think I'm muted. Oh no, you're on. You're on. Um, What's the hiccup with the, um, with fair? Uh, let's see. I did the fit. Uh, I forgot what, I mean, there was the photograph was a hiccup, but then I was like, screw it. Is this going to look like how it looks? And then I got it all done and something didn't work. I, and that's where I just get really bent, but I will follow up with you, Kathy. I will tell you what I, I will follow up to tell you what my problem is. Okay. Yeah. If I can help, let me know. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, and, and Kathy's good at getting through really vastly, largely annoying things. <laughs> good. So things, things I will that, not let them whoop me. Yeah, yeah. Kathy's really good at that. So there's, there's your tool. Good. There's your tool. Okay, remember the chat box is your superpower. When I am sharing screen, I don't see the chat box always. I'll see it at the very end, but um, you know, put things in there. Karen actually downloads our chat box so that you can also see it. Um, but it is a place to at, put questions. Um, never not use the chat box. Um, so there's lots there for you. Uh, when we are going through pictures today for Janet Mills, I did be sure to put in the somewhere on that picture because she likes to know if I took the picture or if somebody else took the picture. So here is uh, that for those of you who like to watch, what did I take a picture of versus what did I buy a picture of? But today you're gonna think about, I've got, I've got a lot of notes for you today. Um, and I've got a lot of notes that are really meandering notes of how can you think about investing in yourself, right? This is profit first. So I'm gonna talk about it from the business perspective and then I'm gonna talk about it from the Mickey perspective of how do we kind of keep getting where we gotta go. And so the three lists today that you're probably gonna make to yourself are just the ways that you'd like to invest in yourself. What would that look like? Um, and how would you like to do that? The next one is the people that you wanna partner with and why, and why for you and why for them, right? So, um, so for cool person lunch that is coming up, um, if you want an invite, definitely put that in to the thing. It's, um, it's coming up here, June, early June. Um, but it's, it's why you want to partner. So I cool person lunch. I needed more people to walk into a law firm. They needed more people to walk into the law firm and I needed a place for my cool friends to meet other cool friends. So, right. It's just kind of looking at who are you partnering with and why. And, and think about that from a prosperity perspective, right? That we're paying yourself first. That is profit first. There is a reason it's called profit. It is enlightenment. It is the part of this, this that's fun. So you also have to look at list number three, which is financially viable ways to have more time for your own ambitions. And sometimes it's creatively problem solving. So like Kayla had some creative problem solving over the weekend um, that happened to benefit uh, my life. Uh, so thanks in advance for that. Um, but it, it is to really look at, right? How can, you, how can you look at other ways to how to pay for things, how to exchange, what that can look like. Um, many of you uh, will recognize that we have Sandy in this picture and I, 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 Kathy's in there. Um, so this is a, from Project Elf. Um, Sandy and um, some other people threw a party for a project that we do, um, that we've done for 18 years um, and that is closed down. But you can create positive change in every profit decision that you make. And so when you are looking at, oh, and there's Karen up front. Yes. So we has everybody, we've got a whole beautiful shot here um, of 
right, that when you are looking at profit, whether it be time, whether it be other resources, you can make those decisions in a lot of ways. One of the things that Sandy talked about today of blessed to be a blessing, of just let me tell people why it's a big deal to get a chart done from somebody who kind of needs that service and you will benefit too. She saw the benefit exchange and let everyone know how they could each profit. If you haven't had it done, it's very interesting. Um, if you like to support female owned business, this is another way, right? That she put in the language around profiting first. You will get that piece and, and learning to be a contributor. That's the other thing about when we are thinking about profit first is that a lot of times your first piece of profit is that you are a contributor. So I think that's an interesting concept of, you know, how, how can you, how can you profit first in that way? Uh, when we are looking at, oh, this is a little stuck. Uh, let me figure out how to unstuck my screen. There we go. Uh, when we are looking at today's concept uh, that I'm gonna go through the fundamentals right here, which is again, the fundamentals of paying yourself first, I don't know why we suddenly have these green lines in every page, but we'll figure that out later. Um, but the first fundamental is right is learning to pay yourself first, is that you have to create a salary for yourself. And you want to create a salary for yourself, even if it's not enough. So um, for those of you who have moved from an LLC into an S-Corp, that's the critical element of moving from an LLC to an S-Corp is that you have to have a salary position at least once a year. Um, and it has to be done through a payroll uh, company, through a payroll program. Um, so if you are looking for how, what are the foundations of paying, of, of profit first, it is to understand that your business has to pay payroll and to pay yourself first and not necessarily the first payment of buying an assistant, right? It's really getting used to, there's a paycheck that comes into my account regularly. Um, and then to automate your savings. Um, most businesses that are over 100,000 are gonna have five different bank accounts so that they have a bank account that is for taxes. They have a bank account that's their main account. They have a bank account that's for savings. They have a bank account that's for payroll. Um, and they have a bank account that is for profit. So when you're looking at that, um, a lot of people will take that 10% out first. So it's automating your savings so that you know what it looks like. Um, so automating so that you know, look, if I'm gonna always make a certain amount every year, I'm gonna need a certain amount for taxes. So we just take it out every month or every time that we can. Or if you're getting paid in chunks of money, you start to understand that 10% goes into my profit account and another 14% goes into my tax account. So you just sort of figure that out. The other thing about reducing expenses, that's kind of the number three item, is the reason that you reduce expenses is really just so you have more money to invest in the things that are interesting to you. So reducing your expenses means that whatever that resource was can now be reappropriated into something that is more beneficial to you. And so sometimes it's just, you might wanna upgrade your phone right? That I'm going to try to reduce these expenses because I want to buy a $2,000 phone. Um, and I, I do remember, you know, thinking, wow, who pays $2,000 for a phone until I was that person? Until I needed two terabytes. <laughs> All right. So sometimes it's just going, wow, I, let me reduce my expenses so I can buy this expensive piece of equipment. And for those of you who uh, ever hang out with me, I, I do a lot of stuff on my phone. So you'll see me writing on my phone or taking pictures or doing videos or whatever. So, you know, think about reducing those pieces, not because you're trying to do anything other than invest more of your profit into things that are meaningful to you. Um, now, so that one slide was kind of the big one that everybody can kind of find out about out in the world. Um, but I'm gonna also talk about the other places and that's really where the Mickey comes in, right? Of how do we get, um, how do we get 
into the comprehensive things of how do you pay yourself first in all the areas of your life, right? How do you, not just the profit of the money that's coming into your, but all of the resources, all of the time, and all of the life commitments that you're trying to make in your world. And when we talk about profit first, it for, for almost 90% of people over the last 25 years of doing this is that they're like, yeah, that's the opposite of what I've been told, right? Because everybody was thinking, push everything forward in your business, every, every dollar, every piece of profit, you put it in there first. Well, it doesn't actually work out in your favor when it's slow. So you have to be able to build the foundation differently. And that is to put the pieces away that are for you, for your taxes, for these other things that offer stability. And then you run the business on what is left. And you learn to run the business based on what that is, or you don't. And, and so it's a very different piece. So if it feels backwards, it is. Um, and the thing I remind everyone is, is that you are the primary stakeholder of your life. And that's a big deal. And so you have to look at what is that role for you? And when I think about that role, I think about, right, who are you personally, right? Who are you? Sometimes that's you are an identity and sometimes that's you as a person, right? So a lot of times we will say, who are we personally? A lot of times you'll assign yourself a role with that. I'm a mother, I'm a teacher, I'm a friend, I'm a singer, I'm a dressmaker, I'm a salesperson, right? Who are you? Um, and, and I would say, hey, uh, you are who your name is, right? And, but who are you personally? And what are the individual goals that you have for yourself in your business? So if your goal is to win an award, then let's put that down and figure out what's the award you want to win. If that goal is for you to become a speaker or a teacher or to be a knowledge sharer, let's talk about that. And that's where we would start putting investments in. So you want to take the time to figure out how and where you need to pay yourself first. Do you need, so when you start to think about how would I pay myself first with time? How would I want that? Where do I want that? Do I want, you know, we talked about Donna having her fabulous, fabulous order of how her world is working, right? That she paid herself in time, but she paid herself in time in a way that made it really easy, that she has her perfect schedule, that she doesn't have to be anywhere before she wants to be somewhere. And that's what I mean. It's the how and the where. She was the how is I want more time for myself, but where do you need that time? Where do you pay yourself first? So it's really looking at that. And, and one of the other things that Donna brought up today was around tracking. It's a big deal. That's why I, you, know, you hear me talk about tracking a lot, but it really, it's what accountability is. It's what a lot of things are. But it's giving yourself the freedom to pursue your passions and to build the life that you want. If you want to be an interesting person, you have to make time to do interesting things. Oh, yeah. boom. Right there, right? If you want to be an interesting person, you have to make time to do interesting things. And that is the flavor. And so when you start to look at um, the resources of paying yourself first, you want to look at, right, what, what are the resources that are available to you? And, and you often hear me talk about that you are the first resource, right? You are the resource that you have is resourcefulness. So, um, Kathy, in that piece, right, where you went, oh, if I want it, so that I could see your resource light bulb go off. What went through your head instantly when you got that piece? Um, Are you with us? 
it's on mute. I think you're telling me the story and we're not hearing it. Oh, yeah, I thought I hit unmute instead of muted. Um, right. So I don't do a lot of interesting things. I find that I'm busy being a mom and, and running a business and, you know, cleaning house and, and making food. And so I don't really have anything to talk about with people because I'm not talking about my, my business. Uh, everything else is just good. So there's nothing to talk about. I don't have any big drama anymore, which I, I'm really grateful for. Um, so when I meet new people, I don't know what to talk about and it feels awkward and I'm not great at small talk to start with. So finding time to do things that make me more interesting will actually pay my business as well as my soul. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I have something to talk about now. I make, you know, I'm, I'm fun to be around and, and we all want to do things with people that are fun to be around versus like, so I made dinner last night. Those BLTs were really good. I mean, like, who cares? <laughs> Although BLTs cares, are really right? good. <laughs> right. It has to, you have to, it has to be more interesting. Right. It has to be more interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's great. Um, the other thing is, is that I will share with you, I put at the end of the two things that I'm very, that's hitting my buttons right now. Um, so, and I think that as many of you as creatives, um, you forget that, that the things that you're creatively interested in are actually interesting to other people. Oh. You know, mm -hmm. like, you know, oh, I'm so into this thing, right? Could be basket weave. It doesn't matter. <laughs> if you're, if you're so, if you're super into basket weave, other people are like, why do I want that? Of course. Oh, you can have it in a sweater. You can have it in a thing. You can have it in this. You, you know, you, you can even basket weave your plants. I mean, there's so many things, right? So it doesn't, basket weave can be exciting if it's exciting to you, right? Um, so that was just random off the top of my head, by the way. Uh, I am not, basket weaving is not my thing, but it today. <laughs> it could be later. Uh, we may have just opened something up. But again, right, you are, you are your first resource. And that resourcefulness, again, I wrote it in here, is the definition, is when you are, um, so, when we look at resourcefulness, it is curiosity, optimism, and determination put together. And this is why this is why teenagers are so dangerous, right? Because they have all three of those things together, like hardwired and breathing on hot, right? So you know, nothing is more resourceful than a teenager um, because they have curiosity, optimism, and determination. Um, so when we're thinking about if you are someone who's a journal uh, writer, um, this is one I would take a picture of, a screenshot of, because this is where you can really use that how journal, right? Uh, for those of you who did how journal class, um, this is right. How are you exercising your resourcefulness to overcome obstacles? And that's why I gave you that definition, right? Curiosity, optimism, and determination. But you are the first resource in resourcefulness and, and it's really unlimited for you. But adding in that how journal question was another piece to that. Uh, when, um, when we are looking at what do people need to be able to profit first is they have to have a secure financial position. And as a business tool and as a life tool, you have to you have to make sure that you feel safe, that you feel that you have the ability to um, to be able to do it. Um, so one of the things that I talk about is insurance. That it is um, insure the things that you have to have. And one of the things that as a business owner, the more money you make, the more you will insure your income. And you have to have been working for three years to be able to ensure your income against disability, but it is to say, right, you have to have a secure financial protection. You absolutely need car insurance. You absolutely need some of these other things. So think about insurance as a security tool for you, and it was a way for you to feel secure in being able to profit. Um, so you'll want to be able to use insurance 
as another tool that helps you understand how can you profit first. It makes you less afraid when you go, oh, if if my house burnt down, I have an insurance policy for a new one, right? If this happens, I have an insurance policy to do that. Um, it's interesting. The other thing in profiting first is really understanding credit lines and other people's money. Now I'm gonna go through the top 10 list of kind of the Mickey ways, but these are the basic pieces that for your business, I want you to have right away, um, which is understanding that a credit line is like a credit card. So a credit card, you want all your credit lines to be clean and available. And you want them to be clean and available so that you can pay yourself first in opportunity. So if there's a class that you have that you think you can pay off in 30 or 60 days, you have a credit line that that can happen, that you have the ability to pay it off, that you have a tool. Having no credit or having under-resourced credit is one of the um, one of the places that really can make a business choke. And the 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 incorrect use of OPM, other people's money, would be holding money on a credit card for year after year. So credit cards like charge plates, those are types of credit that your business is really hoping to be able to pay back within 30 to 60 days. That that, that is part of what the bank is going to start looking at is how much revolving credit you have always. So if it's if it's money that you think you're going to need for over the year, that's money that we would have had as a credit line at the bank versus a charge plate that we're swiping. So in understanding your profit, it is to understand how do you use credit to give yourself opportunity? And, and how does that opportunity work? There's credit that we have at a bank that's longer term money. That's a credit line that you're coming in and out of on a regular basis. Um, a lot of people are using their bank line as their payroll. So that they are just gonna move in and out of that line. In a credit card, a credit card is there just to help you manage cash flow of items, right? So it's a 30 or 60 days, you're there to kind of pay it off every month if you can. Um, or every other month, if you have a bigger purchase, but it's that's what a credit card is for. Your line of credit is for these bigger opportunities where you have to hold like a machinery cost. So if I were going to invest in a whole like uh, very expensive 3D printers, something like that, I'm not gonna do that on a credit card. I'm gonna do that with a bank line of credit. So starting to understand how you're using OPM, other people's money and that those credit lines are there for you as, as a way to invest in opportunity. Um, this is why people want big credit lines also, is that if a lot, for a lot of people, that's their disability. For some people that is, right, how, how am I gonna pay myself if I you know, break my wrist, um, right? That those are what credit lines are for, is to be able to do that. Um, having um, someone who uses their hands this is the benefit of short-term disability. Most people are using those credit lines as their short-term disability plan. So um, that's, that's how they manage that as opposed to paying the insurance for short-term disability. Uh, one of the things that I think about of just profit first, right, is investing that profit into you and really asking yourself what at this moment right? At this moment, you can just throw it into the chat box of things that you've been wanting to invest in for yourself or for your personal or business benefit. So some of you may have, you can just start chatting them in there. Um, of Some of you maybe have been waiting for coaching. Uh, for those of you who come to class a lot, this is probably one of the things that you invest in um, is having a class or coaching or a community that you can kind of jump into. Um, maybe you are looking for accountability partnerships. Maybe you need marketing skills, business skills. Maybe you're looking for specific knowledge. I would just start hacking into um, the chat line, kind of five things at this moment you've been wanting to invest in yourself personally or for your benefit 
And the reason that I want that fast five is because then you guys will read each other's. <laughs> and you can harvest all of the magic minds that are here. So definitely put in your fast five while we're here in the chat box. So I think I've got a couple of you left to put in, um, but I'm going to keep going. Um, this That you are the stakeholder. Um, but this is also that there are other stakeholders that are in your life who is standing right next to you. So when you think about your profit, many of you are wanting to profit for not just yourself, but for your family. So I would think about who are you, pro who are the other stakeholders in your life, right? And some of you are profiting not just for you or your partner or your family or your grandchildren, but some of you are profiting for your community or for a larger conversation, right? That there are lots of there are lots of stakeholders. So I would start to identify who are those stakeholders. Uh, this is another conversation about understanding what is leisure. Um, so paying yourself first in time is also a little bit of a love story, I think, because it is to invite you to also experience the world in that play mindset. I've talked a lot about play. I want you goofing off. I want you doing interesting things. I, as a business owner, I'm telling you, you've got to get out there and goof around a lot more because it is going to put your, your brain into a play mindset. And that play mindset, um, for those of you who maybe remember the superhero class when we did superhero cake fight, right? That's the superpower. It's the superpower of having your mind open up in all of these new ways. For those of you who are worried about that your brain is gonna age out and be crazy, um, that is the benefit of play for you, is it's going to flood your brain with tons of dope, um, of happy dope, that's gonna bring all of that brain tissue alive and wanting more, right? If you if you found something that's interesting or intriguing, you know, you just get this flood of, oh, that's so interesting, right? You, you just, all of you is more available. And so when we're talking about leisure, it is also sometimes for some people, right? That's one of the things that Donna's schedule made such a big deal for is because it allowed her to bring in the freedom of a leisurely pace. So if we have the time to kind of experience something or move into it, it really is a lot different. So think about leisure um, and understanding what leisure is. Another part to figuring out profit first and what's your right profit is you want to look at what your existing obstacles are and what the resources are. And of course, I always like a notebook to write down your ideas. When we look at all of our favorite people who always have great ideas, they all have this in common, that they all have a note notebook that they write down their ideas. Um, if you've sat with me for lunch you, and you say something super smart, you'll watch me put it into my phone quick to go, oh, I got to write that down, right? It's a capturing system. You have to learn the system of capture. How do you capture the great ideas that you're seeing, reading, so forth? You've got to capture that. Um, if you haven't, um, if you if you haven't watched the second brain, watch that again for being able to hold knowledge and what you're good there to do. Um, but capturing those ideas somewhere, and then really looking at it, how you have to capture them so that you can look at them. And so you can look at them and decide how, what are the ideas that you want to start investing in. And what I've learned from all of these years is what's the number one obstacle? And the number one obstacle in how do I do these great things is for everyone is integration. It's how, how, do I, how do I have this new way that I want to live my life, but my life looks totally different than that right now. So I don't know how to make those two things match. So most people are really struggling not with the idea, not with the researching of the idea, that they're really going to stop with how do I integrate that. So I think about that as I want to learn how to play tennis, right? I don't actually want to, but if, I, if that was my thing, right? I want to learn to 
to play tennis, when would I do that, right? That they'll go through, they'll find out where all the tennis lessons are, they'll look at the prices, they'll figure it on their wardrobe, they'll figure out all of these other ways. But when it comes to integration, that is actually the obstacle. So learning to call out the obstacles as they are. So a lot of times people will tell me that they have a hard time taking action. And what they, it's not actually the action, it is the integration. It's the step before action. They, they don't know how to make it move in a way that just gets them in the door, that they don't know how to sign up for like, I, wow, you know, a year of tennis, boy, that's too much, right? One class doesn't feel like enough, um, you know, like. We cannot hear you, Mickey. I think she's frozen. Looks like she went away. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know who's here now. Let's see. There's five of us here. <clears throat> I texted her, so maybe she'll come back. <laughs> I think she's back. Got it. Okay, well, I'm back. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Yay. Thanks for, I don't know. It just suddenly stopped. Isn't that weird? Okay. Um, I will pull us back to share screen and get us back to where we were um, on um, that obstacle, right? Of kind of getting through what is that obstacle. And what is it, um, and, and how are you going to integrate that into your life? When we look at action steps, I would look, go back. If, if you think I don't take action, if that's your thing, and you go, yeah, I have all these great ideas, but I don't take action on them. I would literally go back and look at those things that you kind of yelled at yourself for and go, is it that I don't take action or is it that I don't actually know how to integrate it? And, and for most people, it's the step before action where I can see how it'll fit. I can see how I can make time for it. I can see how it can do that. It, I go back to Donna's piece of really working with her schedule, right? It wasn't just, I need time to myself. It's like, where do you need that time? When do you need that time? What does that have to look like? Right. So if my busy season was now, this is the last time in the world I should be taking a tennis lesson. So, you know, looking at how could I integrate a tennis lesson would have been in January when I have nothing to do <laughs> or Christmas. So when you're thinking about some of those ideas, that's why I love having a notebook, because now you can start to look at 
what's the integration piece, right? How, how, how would that happen? Um, this is another one that you can, if I were going to start the profit first of how to invest in yourself, how to invest in the things that you want. The first question that I would have asked anyone is, okay, well, what do I want to invest a thousand hours into? And a thousand hours in a year is about 20 hours a week. It's 19 hours a week. And there are very few things that I want to invest 20 hours a week into. <laughs> there are very few, like none. That is like all my time. So one of the things about integration is that we also have to be able to integrate things in these smaller increments. That's why the concept of no zero days is so important is you have to do something on your dream. You have to do something on your dream, but it's hard to come up with 20 extra hours, but it's not hard if that, if you have your weekends free, right? If, if you know, that's why you're going, oh, well, I can work two days on a weekend, sure. So when it's easy to come up with that, we all have a thousand hours. If you have, if you work Monday through Friday and you just have weekends off, you have a thousand hours to invest in something. And sometimes that thousand hours is, you know, maybe playing with a cat or the dog, or my family, or, you know, enjoying this beautiful house I bought. There, there are lots of things that you get to do. So when you, the first question I ask everyone is, if, if I were going to do the magic ball, what would you, what would, what is worth a thousand hours of your time? And that list gets really small. That list gets really small. So a lot of the things that you have that you are looking at of, I want to add time to this, are really probably not that many hours. Um, that, you know, if, if you wanna invest time in reading, that might only be 76 hours in a year. So, you know, think about the time um, because a lot of, for a lot of people, that's it. Then I would think about where it is that you want that profit or those resources to be paid into yourself, um, which is to say, right, how do you want those resources paid into you? Sometimes it is that I want <clears throat> that I want my business to be able to move forward faster, right? So like if I want this new part of my business to grow, how can I do that? Right? How can I pay myself in ways? that allow me to get this other thing, this compounding piece. And we'll talk about compounding in my top 10 list, but I would think about the places where you want something more special. Because when you think about that profit, that's where you would have put it. Like, do I, do I want my daily life to be better? Do I want my long-term investments to be better? Do I want more devotional time? Do I want to, do I want, you know, these more relationships? Do I want communication? What do I want? Do I, do I want to use my spare time to be a peacemaker? What are the things that I actually want something special? Not just I should be doing, but profit first. It is to say the part for you, right? The part for you. The part is for you to have all the time. And because you are a business owner, you get to have some cooler stuff. And that is really, cool, really fun. And we'll talk about that as well. And so the question I ask people in just a journal entry is, right, what, when do you let other people who are creators or creative or interesting, right, when do you let them play with you? And, and when do you let them play with you? What do you have that allows people to come into your life, into your experience? When can people come in without any strings attached? Right. So like, I'm not trying to sell you something. We're not networking. We're not whatever. When are you letting people into your life that can just play with you? And, you know, I think about some of those events. So some of you may have come to some of the events that I've had in the past. Right. Let's look the dinner and Blanc. Right. We have 4000 people coming to eat together, um, which with Abby, who I did not invent that event. Abby invented that event. I just bring as many people to that game as I can. Um, and and bring diversity to that game um, because I don't want everybody at that place to look the same. I want them to be from all different types of life. 
And so again, when do you let other creatives play with you? And when are you playing with them? So sometimes it's saying yes to something that might be, eh, you know, okay, right? How, how, what, what are you doing with your spare time? Art of world is coming up, right? That's another place, right? How can you go play with other creatives? Go support them in their booth, go say hello, go bring them a candy bar. You know, there's, there's so many ways to do that. And, and so when I think about that in going to that conversation of how do I pay myself more in resources and so forth, right? There's only 1,440 minutes in a day. Um, okay, 1,440 minutes in a day. Okay, but what are the times that more would be great in your life, right? So I think about Sandy, who's going to be at these booths, right? It would be more, it might be more, right? When is more great? More is great when somebody's going to come and bring you something cold to drink, <laughs> <laughs> right? Or that you're going to have a friend that's there, or you can have somebody that just shows interest in the booth. So 10 other people come and show interest. Sometimes what people need from me at a booth is just for me to show up and look like this is exciting because now other people will come up to the table, right? So it, it doesn't mean that I want to sit and talk about, you know, how much you love to iron. <laughs> I don't need to know anything like that, right? But it's just, that I can play a game with you to go, oh, this is interesting. Oh, you do this. So when people start to come up, I can be that supporter, right? And that is also how we show honor to the people that we have. That's, all, that's how we give praise and appreciate and treasure those relationships. And that's how we give other people our profit, right? That we, that we have enough to give, right? We have enough time, we have enough resources that Sandy took 10 minutes so she could show about her friend, right? Okay, great. Let me talk about this. So think about when you're having those other creators and time is a low stakes win because it comes every day, 1,440 minutes, right? Every morning, you can just wake up your eyes and go, there's another thousand, right? There's another thousand every day. It is chinking itself right down there. Click, click, click. It's like money in the bank. So when you are looking for those low stakes wins, right? Every day you open your eyes, right? The the three little things, right? In the in the uh, in I just came back from Vegas, right? In the slot machine of life, right? Bring 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 up comes one thousand four hundred and forty. So now that I've said it enough times, you'll probably have written it down because one thousand four hundred and forty. That's a lot in a day. That's how many minutes you get in a day. How many of them are, are for you? How many of them were for your business? How many of them were for your family? How many of them were for just staring emptily at that refrigerator at what possibly is going to make itself for lunch, right? Like we, we, we have these minutes. So I'm going to give you my top 10 um, because that's the, this is the one that we'll see, okay? This is, we'll see, we'll see which is the one for you. Because uh, everybody has the thing that they like the most. But my tip number one is in profit first is, is stop making a task list and start figuring out what are the promises that you'll keep to yourself. Um, for those of you who have done a lot of work in understanding how the body works and how we can reduce stress in general and anxiety, the first place that we do are we're working on the promises that you keep to yourself. What Donna figured out is tracking, right? What I'm, I'm having a tracker, I can see my progress. This is a lot, it, it's a list that most people really only put one or two things in there. What are the promises that I'm gonna keep to myself today? And that promise yourself might be that I'm going to do a, ta a task that I don't really wanna do. Uh, it might be that I'm gonna get so many steps today. It might be that I'm gonna eat a bowl of fruit. It might be that I'm going to call my mom, right? It could whatever, but you just decide what are the what are the promises you're going to keep to yourself today, and then review it at the end of the day, or have a system in the morning where you will come back to it, right? That you go, did I keep my promise to myself from yesterday? And sometimes I bring it to the next day, right? What's the promise I'm going to keep to myself? And and that as a practice is is really an incredible tool to say, here's what it's going to do. 
uh, when we're looking at time in that, uh, in that, what are the promises I'm going to keep to myself? It is also looking at how many times I let other people eat my time and eat it for something that isn't really fruitful for me. Um, how do I give it away? Because maybe I feel like I have to. Um, a lot of times we're giving time away because we feel like guilty about it or something. Um, and I'm saying that's that's something to look at. Um, tip number two, uh, you will remember from uh, those of you who took the other class um, around uh, second brain, the second brain concept, it, you would have learned this as mise en place, right? The chefs use everything in its place, but basically it's to get your background tasks working first. So first thing, tip one, promises to myself. Second thing, get all my background tasks working. So everything I need to hand off to my assistant, it's not, I'm not gonna start the day with all the tasks I am doing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna decide the promises I'm gonna make to myself today. But the second thing I have to do is to make sure that all my background tasks are working. So, right, what are, what are the lists that I have to get to my team? Who has to be working on what? What should be moving forward? What does everyone else have to get done so that I can, so that the world can keep going and then I can focus on what I have to do? And that's a lot of times what somebody waits till about 10 to do. And you should be doing it right away in the morning. So, or doing it before you go to bed at night to go, oh, here are the things that I need to send over to Carrie because I need this rewritten or I need this piece of marketing done or I need this other item. Sometimes it's as boring as just putting stuff in the crock pot, right? Of just, can I just make sure that there's dinner available later today? Um, so just think about what that is. Sometimes it's just that I need to know my numbers. That's a background task, right? Do we have enough money in the bank? Um, what do we have, right? So what are the background tasks that have to be done? The other thing is, is that if you have family and you have other schedules to do, that's when I kind of go, well, what do I need to do to make sure that they can all keep moving? So like we had a big family event. So I had to kind of put lots of details out so that everyone else could make their plans. So um, a background task for me was that I had, uh, I have a spare room and I was gonna let people come stay in the spare room. So I had to be here when the spare room was open. So I set out 10 days, 10 weekends that my spare room was available. And then I just sent it out to all of the people that may wanna come and go, hey, here are the days the spare room is available. If you wanna come stay at my house, these are available, right? So that they can be working on their tasks and I don't have to take the time to work on my tasks. So me getting my stuff in order is really helpful. Sometimes it is to say, oh, I have these 10 openings on my schedule. Let me send out an email that says I have, you know, these two appointments that are open, right? I can not have to worry about how to book that appointment or let that appointment not be done if I just look at how many times are available and send them out. And then everybody can work on their task without me having to try to hunt it down. So sometimes it's just as simple as putting food in a crock pot. Um, what partners will benefit? So another piece of background task is really looking at these partners that may benefit from the pieces of your growth. So it's also putting those invitations out. Um, it's letting those background tasks cook. It's those invitations out, right? How, how could I work with this person or do this thing and what would that look like, right? So what partners would benefit? from these things. So I can say, hey, I think we could, would you like to work on these things or this task or whatever? Those are also invitations that you can send out to your partners. Um, tip number three is just off the top, you have to automate 10% of your resources, just automatically have it sent over. If you have a paycheck that comes in every, every two weeks, just automate your savings out of that, right? We've, we've all done that on our 401ks and things like that. But you want them into those accounts. And again, we often talk about those as those five accounts for a business. And if you, are, if you don't have five, if you could just move up to three or four, right? The main account, your tax account, your profit account, right? 
and a savings account for whatever. And you can and you can put that savings account in all three of those if you only want to move to two. But it just allows you to know. It's interesting. If I if I go into a store and I'm and I want to take somebody out or buy them something, I go look. When I have uh, I have adults in my life, but I have people that I'm going to be generous to, and I'll say, look, I've got a hundred dollars in this store that's for you. Whatever you want to buy in here is enough. Then they go, oh, okay. Now I can road map out what my resources are. So sometimes it's just helpful in automation is it lets you know how much is in that account. So you can just navigate. You can just map from that point. So um, when, if your tax bill is lower, now you have those resources available. Now you, it feels like you have extra money. It's still all your money, but it still feels extra. Tip number four is respect. Um, it, it, it is to, to really respect the end that you want. So, and what I mean by the end that you want, it's the end goal. If you want a nice car, that's allowed. If you want a nice home, that's allowed, but you want to map them. So it is respect what you want as an outcome, as an end, and then map your way to them. And so this is a time to really go, let me, let me use my time and my resources, right? Let me pay myself with personal times to make a 90 day goal, right? Let me, let me make that. Let me, let me respect that in how we're going to do this. Because what's interesting, um, you'll know some of the people in this picture, um, but you, your, your business can help you financially build the cool stuff that you like to do. If, if you like to go to Las Vegas and go to a builder's show, your business should pay for that. And you need to charge more in your everyday costs so that your business can pay for that to happen and that it can come out of you know some sort of of other people's money first right so all of the things that you want to create have to come out of somewhere and and we want those and that is the benefit of entrepreneurship is that you get to do the cool stuff that you want um so you know it's it's fun it's fun to do that Tip number five is this one, and, it, and, it, and I'm going to say it a bunch of times, be all in on begin. Be all in on begin. This is the everyday task that makes all of the resource of time go better because efficiency is a gift. If you have four hours of free time, you will make a one hour task suddenly be four hours. You have to really be in on begin. Let me get into this task and do it as quickly as I can, because that is actually the fastest way to increase somebody's cash flow. Is if we teach them how to do their everyday tasks faster, they do more tasks, um, but they become more efficient. The more time we have, the more efficient, inefficient that we become. So really looking at being all in on begin. If I'm going to begin my day with exercise, I'm going to really do it. If I'm going to begin my day with doing um, a project, okay, let me be all in on that. And, and it's getting it in, getting it tidied up, boom, 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 in, out, in, out. Because the more efficient you are, the more time it will give you. And so just start, you know, I put the slide up of a thousand Mickey faces laughing because that is what it is. The faster you can get that stuff done, <laughs> the more time you have to do all the other stuff, right? So if you can get, you know, nip, 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 get, begin, be all in on begin. Let me get all these 10 emails out and then they're done, right? So start to look at how to be all in on begin. Number six is give and get. So where I want you to really think about is my hand going give and then seeing it come back to me as get. Give opportunity a chance to get opportunity. When we look at how to pay yourself first in profit, it is to put yourself in the place, right? Money should call you on the phone. Money should be calling you on the phone. In order to do that, you have to give opportunity a chance to, to give. You have to give opportunity a chance to get opportunity. 
So you have to put yourself into places where people are interested in what you have to say or do so that they can call you later so you can get an opportunity. That's why I do love networking events, but I do like having you in places where you can talk about what you're doing or what is interesting or what you're enjoying, right? Giving opportunity to get an opportunity. And it's not just networking. I mean, it's it, networking can look like a lot of things, but that is number six. Um, <clears throat> when we are looking at how are you paying yourself, you know, are you, when you're looking at how to, how to give opportunity, one of the ways to give opportunity is to put it on the schedule. If you want to teach a class on something, put it on the schedule. Um, the, uh, that that is actually the the for Kaylin that class that she was teaching that that was absolutely how she got to go to that class was because of me just saying that it's the exact same thing put it on the board put it on the schedule just get it on the schedule you, even if you don't know how you're going to make it right now get it on the schedule um, so you can pay yourself with lots of different ways but give opportunity to get opportunity. <clears throat> Tip number seven is personal care rituals. This is a way that you should be using your profit and your resources towards yourself. And it's not just going to the doctor or nutrition. Sometimes it's just a haircut. Sometimes it's just feeling good. Sometimes it is just really looking at the fact that being filled with anxiety over your schedule isn't the right answer. Right. So look at tip number seven, right? The way to profit first is to put those resources towards you and the things that matter and the way they can amplify. And what also happens when you start to do that is we start to connect things. And, and we all know that I talk about play a lot, but when we are doing those personal care rituals, for many people, a personal care ritual is being outside in nature. And by doing that personal care item, it allows them to keep their mind agile. Um, so for those of you who have ever been down to Fort Snelling, um, this is a picture of these stick houses. I make them all over. I make them at the dog park, um, but I make them for people to play in or for dogs to hide in and have a, you can have a picnic in or whatever. And <clears throat> I had, um, I was trying to build a second room on this little teepee and I had this big long stick and I had made my adult son come with me and drag this long stick. I found this long stick that you see in the middle. And uh, I'm like, look, I, I need this to be bigger, but I don't really know how to manage this stick. And he's like, oh, well, I'll show you. And now I could have two places where we could sit and play. Um, but again, it's, it's problem solving. It's just, I just like to spend time in nature and I just make these little stick houses and kids all over. Like people are like, oh my gosh, there's Mickey's stick house. They all know when they see him, then when they see him randomly in the woods or if they see him in places they know that I am, that they're like, I bet Mickey made that. So they'll send me a picture. Like, did you make that stick house? Yes, I did. So sometimes your personal care items are just, if, if you're feeling like you need self-care in nature, there's a reason for that. And, and just do what is interesting to you. If you want to collect leaves or if you're just interested in this little bug or whatever, do that. That is self-care. Um, but what it will do is it will free up your mind to do other things. So just go with it. Just go with it. Um, and not chastise yourself for I'm not working. Then go back to the be in on being in, right? So if you're, if you're willing to be all in on begin, it's a lot easier to take time to be in leisure because you feel like somehow, somehow people like to play this game of I earned it then or something, um, but you don't have to earn it. You get to just have it all. It's not either or, it's and, and. Tip number eight, um, invest in and invite professional development. If you have a place that you can sit down with people, whether it be a coffee shop, wherever it is, even Zoom, right? Invite people in for professional development. If you want to take a class on something, chances are your three friends want to take a class on something. So think about those tables. Think about who you want to sit at a table with, what you want to learn together, what you want to create. 
um, I am I am working on a really big project that involves math. And so I'm like, let's bring all of these people who want to talk about this one particular kind of math together. Um, and that kind of math that I talk about is called blockchain. And so we were, um, you know, so I was writing articles there, there, um, I had a meeting with the state uh, auditor on how this type of math would be very helpful to things that were important to me and important to them. And how can we do that, right? So but we had to be able to invest in inviting these ideas to the table. And <clears throat> for me, math is a magical tool. So I'm going to bring people to the table to talk about math and how math can make things better, like understanding bird migration, or how can we use math to better understand how to track early childhood education. There's a lot of other ways that you can talk about what you do. Um, so think about who you want at the table. And then think about, again, the, the resources that are here. You have so many people. You have not been in a closet for the last so many years, right? That you have other people who have resources. And sometimes that resource is that they can just let you come over to their house, right? Sometimes that resource is, is that they're going to do stuff. Find a way to contribute to each other in that profitability way, right? We are blessed to be a blessing, right? Look at with fondness, with wonder to the people that are around you that you care for of how you wanna support their future and how you wanna invite people to support your um, today or your future. I have just two tips left. Um, tip number nine is, is right, creative time to invest in things that matter. Some of you have things that are really important. Uh, some of you have um, that you would like to know more about a political process or invite people to a political process. Some of you have things that are very interesting. It might be gardening, right? It might be a community garden. So think about what it is that you want to invest your time in, the things that matter. Because if they are important to you and you are giving time to them, you will feel better. You will feel richer. You will have taken the profit, the grace, the honor, the praise, the appreciation in your life and paid it directly to you. And that is prosperity, right? We are trying to get that prosperity to come to you. And <clears throat> one of the things about using that tool, right? Using other people's resources or being with other people is that it, you, get to, you get this amazing fun list, right? Co-creation is so much better when you get to do stuff that's a little larger than normal. If it's a little bit crazy, sometimes it's things that I need more optics on, that I need more data on. So if I want to talk about um, a topic that's bigger and I don't know all the parts, let me invite three of my friends and we'll do it together. So if you want to do something that has a little bit larger than life, invite those people over, right? So if I were going to want to do a class on remodeling Zoom class, I might want to co-create that with another friend. Let's talk about faucets, right? And then invite everyone to a Zoom call and let's just talk about faucets and what we all need to know about a faucet, right? So like it, it doesn't, the fun list of co-creation can look like a lot of things. Uh, my last tip, and this is the big one, right? Which is compounding growth. This is like the magic that kind of ties it up. If you can actually do that front end work, right? Of looking at from the beginning, the how and the when, right? We had, right, this one, we have the three lists from the very beginning, right? What are the three lists that you should be making, right? The ideas of ways that you would invest in yourself, the people that you want to partner with and why, and then, right, the money. You, you need the money, right? The, the financially viable ways that you can do that. Then we look at the other thing that was requested, right? Is the how and when. How, when, and where, right? Where do you want those? Where do you want the space? Where do you need that freedom? And, and then we start to look at the resources. What are available? And what ends up happening is when we start to compound, when you start to write them down in that list, you start to get an idea, you sketch them out. 
and you start seeing how they interconnect, how they interchange, not exchange, interchange. When you start seeing that, what ends up happening is now you can add them up to compound. So if, I, if I'm taking a class on finance and then I take a class on accounting and then I take a class on marketing and then I take a class on prosperity, now I'm going to start to see where I can pull multiple ideas forward on multiple layers. And, and that's the beauty of compounding uh, knowledge, compounding growth. So when you're looking at things, you want to think about things that you can continually grow on top of, on top of, on top of, on top of. So sometimes eating healthier means that you'll have a compounding effect that you actually feel like you can do stuff faster. You don't feel so sluggish, right? And because you don't feel so sluggish, now the compounding effort is, is that maybe you want to take on something that's a little more effort. And now that you've successfully done something that has a little more effort, now I'm willing to take on something that has even more, right? It's this compounding growth. Compounding growth is really where it gets to be great. And then once you understand compounding growth, then you can start to look at ways that things can multi add up in multiples, right? So if we go back to the class of superhero cake fight, right? We all got a chance to dress up and play. We all got a chance to be outside. Right? We all got a chance to use our brains differently. We all got a chance to have our picture done. Right, There's a lot of things to do that. How do we get things to add up in layers and multiples? So the ecology, right? different than an environment. Ecology right, is just the fact that it is. And when we look at that, it is the, the physical components that make you diverse, healthy, and vibrant. And, and that's the thing that you want to think about when you love someone who is vivacious, when you look at someone who has a voracious hunger is that they are diverse, healthy and vibrant. And so you'll want to think about that. As I promised earlier, I would tell you the random things that I'm into right now. Um, and that's where you can look within for your own, where does your profit need to go? How do you profit first? is, right, what are you into? What are you into? Right now, I'm super into snails. I bought a bunch to put in an aquatic environment so I could just stare at them during the day because they are peaceful creatures and that inspires me. Um, how long they'll be, sure don't know. The second thing that I will give you is you, you have to dare to be interesting. The second thing that I'm really into right now is this thing called Paso Doble. Paso Doble is a, the music, um, this kind of music that was in bullfighting, right? And this is from the 19th century. Even if you don't like bullfighting, you can still appreciate the music of it. So, so it's diving into something that is not in my everyday life that I, I can go, oh, this is very interesting. Because remember, you are the primary stakeholder of your life. You're the one that's going to diagram this out. If you want more money, then let's figure out how to do that. If What do you want money for? What do you need that for? Do you need these types of opportunities? Do you want to photograph this certain kind of thing, right? So think about that. You are the primary stakeholder in your life. If you want a nice car, you're going to want to get that. It, it, it's respect that you want those things and not being overburdened with, I don't know how to make that happen. That's what these groups are for. That's what these groups are for. So I'm going to stop share and come back um, because I will be curious um, as to what is the things that are there. The other thing is, is that um, whatever the five things that you put in before I blocked out, it took my chat box away. So if you re-put them in, um, we can also talk about that. Um, so uh, Kaylin, I'm going to go to you first. Um, what, what did you take away today? What was your takeaway? What'd you learn? 
Uh, well, I learned how many hours there are in <laughs> a weekend and just I found the whole thing very inspiring. Like, OK, just take like be all in at the beginning because that integration is so hard for me to be able to do. And I just struggle with energy some days and just planning for that and just learning how to really work with the time that I have. Yeah, yeah. And integration for you, what's the what's the obstacle of integration? Is it that you just have too many tasks? What's the obstacle? Um, the amount of tasks and the anxiety about being new and not really feeling like I can be successful. Oh, yeah, I love that one. I love that one. Um, and so in that being new at something, is there is there section because that like I think I start thinking about where would I get anxiety about being new and the anxiety can be in my process it can be in your product it can be what it can be in your outcome I mean and you're doing a visual gift so like a lot of it's not up to you right because the model themselves has to be willing to do it um so, so where, where does it get you? Where does that being new feel dodgy? Um, I guess the main area that it's been difficult is just with finding the ideal clients instead of just working with just anybody, but trying to market myself in the way that I can find the people that are really wanting what I have to offer, as opposed to me just trying to fill in for something that I'm not really trying to do. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's a good one. I I'll, I'll give you some other recommendations on that part um, because sometimes it's just having playing with people in that way, and then the energy will keep moving, right? So good good outcome. Okay, Sandy, what are you taking away? Thank you, Kaylin. I don't know quite yet. <laughs> okay there's, there's a That's lot allowed. well okay so some of this you know like i i really get it and then there's other stuff that i don't do at all like like putting my money into different accounts yeah i wouldn't even know where to start so like everything just goes into my checking account and it just sits there till i need it yeah <laughs> and that's allowed and that's allowed. Well, good news is you, you've made enough money that it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, so I don't know. I that's what I don't do, but I can see. Uh, anyway, I don't know. Okay, that's allowed. <laughs> if if I were going to think of one yeah. of the ten tips, did any of the ten tips strike you as? Oh yeah, that's my thing. Um. I like, uh, let's see, I like the, about getting together with other people to study a topic. Right. That's I like that a lot. I can for you. Yeah. That's that, awesome. that, that, that if you weren't going to pick that, I was going to throw it at you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like the, uh, number nine, creative time to invest in things that matter. Um, cause I do some of that. Like you do a lot of that. And I took a self-defense class last week, and now I'm going to take another one in June, and I'm going to invite some people, see if they want to go with me. And um, yeah, so those were two that, anyway. Out of, out, of that, out of that list for you, that's, that's the, one, uh, the, the one where you can invite people to learn on a topic. I think that's really going to be a strong point for you. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah. Okay, good. You, you got it. You got everything you needed. <laughs> Kathy Corkard, tell me your takeaway. You got to unmute. We can't hear a thing you're saying. Sorry. <laughs> She's figuring it out. I'll ask and see if it comes out. There you go. Nope, not yet. She's coming. There it goes. Three times the charm. Um, integration, uh, obstacle is integration. That was big. I never thought of it like that. And yeah, that's a thing. Like 
lives get busy and then you're like, well, I don't have time for that. When the reality is you make time for the things that are important and, and sometimes rephrasing that, like you make things time for things in the department. Well, then, then I have to choose my kid over tennis or, or whatever it is that you were, you're into. Well, then I feel like I have to choose my kid because that's really my priority. But when the obstacle is integration, when you rephrase it into that, then that feels very different than it's, I just have to find a way to, to fit that in and I'll still prioritize all the things that are important. Um, right there. So if you want to, so right there, right there. So that's your A. Let me explain your A you just got. Uh, because you just got your own lesson in have you been learning in prosperity mentality? What have you been learning? And that is the either or, right? right. Now it's and, and. You just understood how all, like why you come into class? Why do I always bug on you, right? Why do I hunt you down, right? Why, why are you trying to live in a prosperity mindset? Is that is exactly it, right? Before your old mindset said either or. If I do this, then I don't have time for this. And that's not the way it is. Then now you can go back in to that prosperity mindset and go, oh, let me, let me tangle with this a little differently. Right, there's Anne. And then there's and some more, and then there's and some more. Yeah. Um, but the big one was really, if you want to be an interesting person, you have to find time to do interesting things. Cause um, yeah, it, I feel like that, that reframes so many things on even where, where I'm struggling in my, in my business is like, if I don't have anything to talk to, if I'm not meeting new people and not just in these like artificial settings, but like, Oh, hey, you know, we were at, went out and played a, a round of golf today and I was talking to somebody and they're uh, something, something and and who knows where that leads. Um, and then it's some, I have something to say to people. Oh, yeah, we golfed today. It was great. We were out at instead of I worked. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. It, it, it's it's making time for interesting. But the integration, I think everybody it, it, it is everybody across the board. And that's why we just go put something on the schedule. Just put something on the schedule, even if you don't know what it is, right? So like right now, um, I had somebody who remembered from last summer that they're like, oh, when's your, uh, when's your walk schedule coming out, right? That they know that it's going to be early in the morning. They know it's going to be outside, but you know, sunrise feels a lot better in the summer than it does mm -hmm in the winter of like, okay, yeah. I'll meet you at 6.30 in the morning at the lake. Um, you know, nobody nobody likes my 5.30 time, <laughs> but a lot more people like it at 6.30. And sometimes, so in the winter, I started moving it to 7.30. But um, but again, I, if I just set up my schedule, right? Now people can integrate into it. I don't, I don't have to walk every week. I don't have to do it all the time. I can just go, where can I put it in, right? And then I can just have that time to walk with people. So it, it, for you, it's really going, what are the things that I do want to integrate into my schedule? And, and that's going to be interesting things. And so it's interesting. Like the, the, the two are really a huge tie in. Like to do interesting, to be interesting, you have to do interesting things. But the only way to do that is to just put it on the calendar. Correct. Because I'll never find enough time. There's no magical genie going to come and go, oh, you have all the money and all the free time today. Yeah. It's, 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 it's learning to do that. Yeah. And, and um, you will be surprised if you really work faster on the things that have to get done. If you, if you focus in on just doing that even a day, it allows the integration to open up for you because you'll just have more time. And also then you have that time thing, like, and I don't know about anybody else, but I work well under a certain amount of pressure. And so if I have X amount of hours to get something done, and I, I joke around with this getting ready, if I have eight hours to get ready, it will take me all day. But if you give me 30 minutes, I am on. So if I can get the work, you know, if I plan something fun, then I have this amount of time to get the work done, I'm going to get it done. Yeah. Yeah. Faster. Yeah. Like, totally. Love it. Anna, Thank what's you. your takeaway? Well, how fun to find out that my, I've paid myself with my schedule. Oh, um, so many ways. It was brilliant. Yeah, I, I heard, I, you know, I was listening the whole time and I, you know, I heard my name a lot and it was, that was, um, 
you know, it's profit is not a word that I throw around in my world, my business world. And so I was curious to see your, like how I could glean something from it today. And then it turns out I was the star of the <laughs> example of, you know, me arranging my schedule and it even gets better. Like I've had a great schedule since November, but now it's moving into an ideal schedule next week and it's spring. So like talk about magnify. Oh my God, this is going to be amazing. And for those of you who don't know me, uh, morning, you know, I will never be walking with Mickey at 5.30 in the morning. I mean, never say never, but let's don't well, put your money on that. you're still awake from the night before. Oh, yeah, something like that. <laughs> Keep taking those pictures of the sunrise because that is, you are my eyes to the sunrise, Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so that be, be all in on begin, you know, I, this whole scheduled thing was I've had the idea for like six months at probably at least, but I knew that it was going to be a, quite an endeavor to see it through. And I knew that I didn't really have the energy or the fortitude to see it through. So I didn't begin the process till about a month ago. Um, so the be all in on begin is like, I have to, I begin a lot of things and it's the follow through that I struggle with. So I'm not like, I, I, I hear that one with a grain of salt, but I get it from the context of if you have four hours, your one hour task will become four hour task. And yeah, that I get. So uh, that's a, that's a good takeaway for me. Um, that and, profit and the other, equals. The other part to that, Donna is, and the one that I want to kind of explain it for everyone else, we all know that, but what we don't acknowledge is then I lose the three hours of other tasks. Yeah. Yeah. That, that by, by doing that, a be all in on begin by when we do that, what ends up happening is we've eaten away the opportunity of the other three hours that we're robbing. Oh, and, ourselves. Well, and, and that compounds because then it's and the it beating compounds. up the emotional, right. you know, like, oh, why didn't I, you know, like all that, that whole. Correct. Correct. That just plays. Yeah. 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 Right. So, so the, the reason to be all in on begin is because yes, that we go, we kind of go, oh, I understand this. I understand that if I use up my time this way, I'll just do that. Sure. But what you're doing is you're robbing yourself of those three hours for something else that's more meaningful. And, and if you don't know what's the more meaningful part, you don't have a reason to be in a hurry to get there. The reason that it's okay for you to just use up that time is because there's not something else that's more pressing. Or it's just to be relaxed, you know, you sure. know, like, just well, I love like leisure. you say, yes. play with the cat, you know, like, yeah, but that profit is the part for me. That's the biggest print on my notes. Um, like, uh, again, Rich Chick's always teaching us what our resources are. Um, and time is just a big, big deal. And I have paid myself and it's woo, yeah. feeling good. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and I think that um, when we look at how many times you've gone back to pay yourself with time, um, we really see how that has profited you, you know, even, even in just all of the things that you got done in the last few years, right? You were able to do stuff for your family, you were able to invest in your house, you have, you know, you, your garden is great, but you've been able to invest time in music and doing stuff with the people that are, is important to you, but you've been able to put that profit to work in your life. And it's really done a great showcase to you, I think. Well, in one of our buddy calls, you had said something like, what's the biggest boss or something? I just, I, it's in, and it came out to be time. And so I've been taking like, okay, so all these like things that I've accomplished and I just, you know, there's a little like, oh, it's taking too long. You know, it's taking so long. And um, it's like, what if time was removed from the equation and we just looked at results and what, I mean, like what the things that have been accomplished without 
on, not on the timeline, just a boom list. It's like, yeah, then it's a lot more um, fun to look at. It's when I put it in a timeline and have all the expectations that come along with the timeline. Um, so it's really fun exercise to take uh, take it out of a timeline and just look. Yeah, that's, then I can awesome. see things better. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. So interesting how time is a big deal and time is, you know, it could be a, a friend or an enemy, I guess. Yeah. Oh, time can be a time can be a gift or time can be a thief. I think right. I said that. So yeah. yes. Yeah, that's a that's a great I'm gonna put that into the chat box. Yes, time can be a gift. It can or also a be thief. a thief. Uh, and well, I, can't, I can't I can't say that's spelled correctly, but there we go. Great. Oh, it looks good. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, any any words of advice for me on um, today? So one, I thank you so much for being here. Any any words of advice for Mickey on on uh, profit first? Any any words of advice in general? Well, you're walking your talk with the sharing your lessons with your people and how you giving to us um i hope that you're i mean i believe you're getting something back but i mean you you give you are a role model for giving mickey and oh thank you that's so nice you are welcome thank you i will take thank that you, love thank you i will take that love uh kathy any words of advice oh she's on mute again it's a it's we're, we're learning mute stupid mute today um stupid. no because i feel like you have this way of saying things that um that sometimes leaves me kind of in in awe and speechless like i don't even know how to say the things um other than of course that you know we i think all adore you and continue to come back because the um amount of of learning and the the, the depth of of the perceptions that I think that we get from you um, because you perceive things very differently than I think the average person does. And so being able to, to really see things in a different way. And, and I know that I would have never understood or even heard of prosperity mentality um, and been on that trajectory of it's, it's not me versus you at all, right? Like we can both have all the things because there is plenty. The world is filled with plenty. Yeah. Um, so I have nothing but but gratitude. So keep doing what you're doing because you're rocking it. I'll take I'll take the advice. I'll take that advice. Kaylin, what any words of advice before we go? Oh, I I I don't know that I have any yet. Maybe someday I'll have advice. <laughs> okay. Do you have any advice for any of us? I just want to say, Kaylin, you, you your voice is really beautiful, and I'm so glad to hear you embarking on your journey, and I'm so glad that you're connected into Rich Chicks, um, at least just with networking. But there's there's more there if you're you know dig deep, and you will you will find treasures in this organization. So just want to say welcome, and and just I I think you're on the right path. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. We're glad you're here. We're glad you're here. Uh, if you if you find another ways of advice, just send it on. You know how to find me. Uh, okay, <laughs> Sandy. Any any words of advice before we go? Hmm. I don't really have any advice. Just I appreciate you teaching these classes every month, and I really get a lot out of it. And um, it helps also because we can share this in the world to the people that are around us yeah so i really appreciate it and you yeah you have a neat unique way of seeing things that other people do not have so i think a little, little mickey magic is how i think I, of it I'll, I'll <laughs> mickey <take> magic <laughs> keep making the magic right? mickey thank you all right well karen we are, are are all behind you today i know that you are in the middle of the hospital but uh you know thank you I'm, so much i'm actually yes i'm in the middle of a hospital and he's in surgery right now, so okay. um, I'm hopeful. You know, these are the things that kind of um, get your what you want to do off track. I don't, I don't want to be here doing this, 
but he's got good medical care and I know that, but there's so many things that we didn't get done that we want to get done. So we're getting back on track to doing normal things is in our mirror right now. Right, right. Well, we are all with you. So uh, sending you love and light today. I mean, lots of love and light. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Bye everyone. Have a great day. You too. <laughs> Have a great day.